Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Baby Blacephalon. It's an archetype that I recently took to a cup and top baited with uh, just yesterday. And uh, I think it's a reasonable archetype to be honest. I think there's an amount of wheezing popping up. Um, and also there's that Shedinja deck which did very well this weekend in Santa Clara. But um, I think now that those two decks are kind of like on the radar, there'll be more Field Blower being played and those decks aren't going to be quite as good. And also bear in mind that Reshizard did win a special event and the uh, regionals. So Lacephalon is very good at dealing with Tag Team GX Pokemon. That's his big selling point. His damage output is insane. And uh, that's what tends me towards this sort of archetype where it can just get huge one-hit KOs. That is the selling point of this deck. So let's have a look at the list, talk about a few card decisions. This is the exact 60 I played at the Cup. Um, and I think there's one or two cards that I'm looking to change, but... It's kind of uh, where I'm at at the moment with the deck. So let's jump into the list. Starting off with four Stellar Wish Jirachi. So initially, when we saw the list from Japan, uh, Blacephalon was played just with uh, Poke Years and Green Search. Uh, but I think Stellar Wish is just too good of an ability to say no to. You can pull out Fiery Flints and Welders, uh, even Lilies on turn one, which is good if you're going first. Uh, and then getting you Fire Crystals uh, throughout the game, like as your Blacephalon suffer knockouts. It just gives you so much draw power the entire time. So Stellar Wish is a phenomenal ability that we can really take full use out of here. Then we have the Blacephalon himself, four copies. Uh, it's a 120 hit point basic Ultra Beast that has two attacks. The first is Blazer for a fire. You do 10 and you turn one of your face down prize cards face up. If it's a fire energy, you do 50 more damage. Um, this is reasonable for knocking out uh, Jirachis, thanks to weakness. It's also reasonable for knocking out like Zeruas and Inkes and stuff, or like Ditto Prism Stars. So um, if you count your prizes and know how many fires in there, you can take the risk sometimes for Blazer attacks. Usually, uh, if you, unless like your prizes are like four or more fire energy, um, you'll just try and get like an extra Stellar Wish in if you can. But it's an option to put things in range. Bear in mind the 10 damage sometimes is relevant putting like a Zoroark GX uh, one Fire Energy less uh, to Fireball Circus for a knockout. Uh, even like Gardevoir Sylveon, the same thing, will be one Fire Energy less because you're just putting that 10 damage on. Um, so Blazer is a reasonable option in random spots. Fireball Circus, however, is the main uh, sort of reason why we build around this deck. For three Fire, you do 50 and you discard the number of Fire Energy from your hand and it's 50 for each you discarded. So you just use Fire Crystals and Fiery Flints to essentially be... Well, the Crystal is 150 damage if you recycle those three Fires. The Fiery Flint acts as 200 damage. You get it all in your hand and you just start chucking it into the discard pile when you announce Fireball Circus and your damage scales to how much you do. So the entire archetype is about using and uh, recycling these Fire Energies for your damage output. That's how the deck functions. From there, two other one-offs, the Oranguru. I had in here initially just as a nice safeguard to let loose. It's obviously something your opponent will try and do against you a lot. Uh, let loose and judge uh, for the top tier decks of what people are going to do against you to try and disrupt this. Because, of course, a lot of the time we need to be holding things in our hands like backup fire crystals, like fiery flints, like welders and whatnot on certain turns. Um, so having Instruct in here is actually pretty good. And it turns out he's a reasonable attacker in a number of matchups as well. He's very good in Mirror because Psychic can uh, respond KO a Blacephalon without the need of your own Fire Crystals and whatnot. So that's always very good. Also, same thing for Quagnag. You can knock out Quagsires in response and stuff like that. So I found a lot of moments where I was actually using Psychic to take uh, prizes in non-GX matchups. So bear in mind, Oranguru is a reasonable option. You have uh, Batons to just instantly move those three energies straight to him. And even then you have Welder and you can attach for turns. So... Uh, Oranguru gets involved in an attacking sense as well in non-GX matchups and Instruct is just a good deal for you uh, where you can get supplementary cards here and there that can get you out of bad spots so do bear that in mind. From there we have uh, one Victini Prism Star. I saw this uh, played in Azul's list that he posted like last week and actually really enjoyed it. I think it's a very useful card. Uh, having that infinity option as that sort of last chance reload of energy cards is pretty reasonable for you. You do 20 for each energy in your discard pile. Um, and then you shuffle those back into your deck. So you really do clunk out your deck. Uh, so this is usually just sort of an end game situation that you'll do this. Um, just when you have run out of fire crystals or um, energy retrievals. Or you just don't have them accessible to you. You can go for this infinity. And usually, you know, there's like 9, 10 energies in the discard pile. And you're doing a huge amount of infinity. So uh, it's actually crucial that we play 13 fire in this list. It means that... 
Um, you can knock out a Zoroark if you have 11 in your discard pile and then the two requisite on the active. So I think 13 is a key number for fire energies, at least if you're playing a uh, Victini, uh, because 210 is like a really good barrier to be starting to hit because of the stage one uh, GX Pokemon. So bear that in mind. A lot of the time it's just used as that like last chance push to get over the line, which is really useful. Um, and it's also very, very good against uh, these stalling milling archetypes. It means you're not just limited to your four fire crystals and your two energy retrievals. You have infinity that literally just lets you get over the line very easily against stall players. And that's very relevant, of course. There's lots of uh, Regiga Super, Lucario, Melmetal decks also succeeding in the early uh, meta of Unbroken Bonds. So this Victini is a great safeguard against those sorts of things. Onto the item cards, I play a number of one ofs. Uh, the one of Rescue Stretcher, I think, is fine. As mentioned, if you're uptrading on GXs, you don't need to go through many Bicephalons. Uh, so the one Rescue Stretch is fine for non-GX matchups mainly, but bear in mind we already have the Victini and the Oranguru and four Blounds. So we technically already have like the six prizes like laid out for the opponent. And even then, you know, if it's like a Zapdos or something, they'll be knocking out Jirachis here and there the whole time. So I think one Stretch is all you really need. Uh, I never felt wanting more. Um, so one copy is obviously fine. If many of the Cephalons have just get, got knocked out in like early stages, uh, you can do the stretcher for three targets if you really have to. Uh, you've got the Adventure Bag is a nice one of in here. I think it's a nice option just because Batons are crucial and um, sometimes getting multiple is great just to not only have one for the turn that you're using it, but for the following turn so that you can chain your Fireball Circuses. That's a main premise of the deck using Wishful Baton uh, to retain three energy cards for your next Bicephalon. So Adventure Bag's huge for that, and it has that versatility of also getting you escape boards. So when you're Stellar Wishing, you have extra outs to find switches and escape boards, which is really awesome. Uh, one copy of Field Blower, I think it's really nice. It's kind of like a mirror tech to remove other people's um, Wishful Batons. It's nice also against Quagnag, again, their Wishful Baton Reliance. Uh, Weezing has lots of spell tags that you want to get around if you can. Weezing being one of the harder matchups, obviously. Um, because they're getting their, des their detention gas ability the entire game, and we sometimes have to Stellar Wish in games, which is easy prizes for them to uh, mop up with, but at least Field Blower can get rid of a couple of spell tags at the right time and remove that element of headache from us, uh, which is nice. And in general, it's Stadium War, um, and it's a few other helpful things along the way. Getting rid of like other people's escape boards and whatnot is always going to get some value. So I think Field Blower is becoming more and more of a relevant card. Again, Weezing is becoming more popular, and then a Shedinja deck that got two placements of top eight in Santa Clara just means that Field Blower has to be played uh, because Shedinja is so annoying to get around and Field Blower is just a really hard answer to it. So I imagine Blower will be going up in a lot of decks and it may make life more uh, volatile for the Shedinja deck and the Weezing deck, which I'll talk about later on in the week, of course, uh, when we get the deck lists in and I can have a full discussion about those lists. Uh, for now, Field Blower is just a versatile good card for the matchups that I stated. Um, and it's not going anywhere, really, I don't think. It's like one of the only greedy cards I have in the list that's not, like, core to the strategy of the deck, but it was useful over the weekend, and I think it's a keep, which is annoying because you want to simplify this deck as much as possible because it has inherent jank. When you think about having, like, 13 energy cards and then, like, 6 more, or, like, uh, sorry, 10 more cards dedicated to just energy cards, you have, like, so that's 23 cards dedicated to just energy cards, which don't do anything in your deck other than, like, do our damage or whatnot. So uh, you're worried about your opening hands of this deck a lot. So even, like, the one-off Field Blower, you really have to think about how strong it actually is in the meta to be worth it or not, um, because you want as much as possible to simplify this deck, because otherwise it'll just clunk out on you so often. So the Field Blower really does have to be justified. But at the moment, I believe it is. Um, so that's my standpoint on the Field Blower. Onto the switching cards, one escape rope. We only play one Guzma, so the one rope is like a pseudo uh, gust effect to move the opponent out of the active. If they're just going to throw a non GX in our face when we want to take a two price knockout, escape rope's great for that. Obviously, it's extra synergy with Stellar Wish, so that's going to pair up with a three switch that we have. Uh, for the energy recovery cards, two retrieval as well as four fire crystal gives us plenty of options to get fires back from the discard pile to Fireball Circus for huge damage outputs. Um, then we have the Fiery Flint, another amazing card. It fins the deck for us. You discard two. Uh, oftentimes you're discarding like some fire to get more fires into your hand. That's normally how the Flint plays out because getting fires into your discard part isn't a problem when you play four Fire Crystal and two Retrievals. But it just means that you're thinning your deck pre stellowish which is sometimes huge uh, to give us better chances of hitting these Welders and hitting these Lilies and whatnot. So it does a great job of deck thinning for us. 
Uh, you always have to see Fiery Flint, and it also counts as like 200 damage in certain situations. So it's a phenomenal card. We play four copies, even though like you never really use four Fiery Flints in a game outside of like thinning around Judge and stuff. Um, but you just want to access this card early because it makes your welders always very live. And it just means that you have a good amount of card, uh, amount of energy to see early on for these fireball circuses. Because, of course, the fire crystals and the energy retrievals don't work until you've started to you know, cycle the fireball circus in the first place. So the fiery flint is core for the deck, of course. I'm playing four Nest Ball, um, only one Ultra Space at the moment. So the Nest Ball is obviously taking priority because it has the versatility of also getting us the monkey and more Jirachis, which just makes uh, simple sense there. The stadium count is one Heat Factory, one Ultra Space. I really want another Ultra Space. I think it's very important to have two Blounds on board at any one time because you're trying to bat on the entire time. Um, so uh, I could definitely see wanting to add in a second Ultra Space. That's like the card that I'm really looking for in the list right now. A space for Ultra um, in the list. That's really all I'm looking for here. Um, so one copy at the moment, but I could see it going up to two. If you think Field Blower is less mandatory, if you think you're okay in Mirror already, and you think Quagnac's already a bad matchup, which by the way it is. Um, like you just play Ultra Space and have extra outs to Blounds early, which is reasonable, I guess. Heat Factory is an insane stadium, of course, synergizing with the discard power with Fire Energies and just getting us more draw power. One Guzma, uh, you only have a few key moments when you can use Guzma. Uh, essentially, like when a Baton's worked, you put three energy to the back and you've already managed to like Stellowish into some Fire Crystals and whatnot, or if you've just taken some Fire Crystals off your prizes or whatever. You have that key moment to take like a two prize knockout or a three prize knockout with Guzma and it can completely swing a game. So uh, it's obviously integral to have this card. It's really, really strong, um, especially with um, Jirachis. You get an extra like free Stellar Wish sometimes. If you have two Jirachis on board, you can do one Stellar Wish, retreat into the other Stellar Wish and then Guzma. Um, so you can build toward big knockouts and it's obviously a phenomenal card in the deck. Like I would want to play more, but the jank factor is just there. So we just have one copy here, which is still a big power spike because at the end of the day, we can do single individual prize trading as long as our batons are working. Um, and then we can have that big like two prize knockout to go ahead in the race if we need to with Guzma. And that's why he's here. For Lily is a fantastic supporter card. Obviously, turn one, it's great if we're going first. You want to get that big hand size rolling because we need a lot going on in our hand. We need to dig these fiery flints, dig for batons, find backup blounds. We need to do a lot, and we need to find a welder either on turn one or two. And if you miss welder on turn one, Lily's still great. You can draw into that large hand size and hope that on turn two you can find yourself your welder. So welder's obviously an integral supporter. We're not attacking with anything but blazer unless we uh, hit welder on turn one or two. Uh, so it's something that we really need to dig out of our deck pretty quickly. I thought about adding in Poker Gears as well. That's another card that's sort of been on my mind a little bit with this deck. Um, at the moment, I think Lily's a good enough include to sort of like be over uh, Poker Gears. Even if you were to cut to like three Lily and add in like two Poker Gears and find a space somewhere. Um, I think at the moment, I like just the 4-4. Four, four. Lily does kind of get weak, but there definitely are those moments where you can still Lily in like the mid game. Again, if batons aren't getting blowered, like on those turns where they actually proc, you have the freedom to use Lily, which is great because you can continue to draw cards. Fiery Flint does thin the hand quite nicely. Even if you're taking like no targets, you can just dump some cards that you don't need. And um, then Lily up to more cards. Kind of core things you want to have in your hand, like most of the time in this deck, is like Fire Crystals, uh, Energy Retrievers, and a backup welder in case someone does blow your baton. So those are kind of the things you need to like look to try and have in your hand as often as possible uh, so you're safeguarded against those things but Lily's going to help you do that sort of in the mid game as well so that's always something to bear in mind uh, two board obviously for your Jirachi also it can make Victinia pivots and the three baton I've talked about it a lot we do lean into this card a huge amount with this deck because our attack cost is three um, but it means that you can just go straight onto your next blound straight onto your next blound straight onto your next blound and it means you don't have to welder at all you still can just to get the draw power elements of course um but, yeah, Fireball Circus is the attack that we need to use as much as possible. So Baton makes that very possible. And then we have the 13 energy. I've already mentioned with the Victini why 13 is the minimum barrier. Uh, you may need to go up to 14, to be honest. Like, a physical 14th might be better than a second energy retrieval just to make Infinity even more viable. Um, so I have thoughts about that cut as well. Uh, at the moment, I'm with 13 energy. It's still a huge amount when you're playing four Fiery Flints, so... I think it's enough for you to get value out of your Victini Prism Star. So, yeah, that's going to be the list. And let's jump into the ladder and play some games. 
as mentioned, I've had a few games with this now, both online and um, IRL, now that they've taken it to a cup. So I've had some battle experience with it. I think it's, again, a reasonable archetype for sure. If there are going to be uh, Mill and uh, Reshizards around, you're happy with that. You're really happy with that because those are matchups you want to see a lot. So these Baby Blounds has some good matchups. I was able to beat a Zap Beasts in the day as well. It's one of your close, more difficult matchups, I would say. Um, but it's a winnable matchup because your hit points is annoying. You force them to, you know, there are turns where they have to try and find multiple uh, Electro Powers and whatnot. So you can make life awkward for them. So there's definitely some merit to this deck. But you can see, as I've mentioned, we have a lot of cards dedicated to just energy cards. And we've drawn into a lot of them in this opening hand here. You're getting the benefit of a mulligan, which is helping us out a lot here. I see Welders on the opponent's side of the board. And they're also playing Poker Gears. Um, so we're definitely going to need the help of this mulligan. And it gets us a Jirachi, which is nice. And we have one turn draw as well, which is Welder, which can get us rolling. So let's Welder two energies. Onto the active, and draw three cards. We just get ourselves... See, this is the worry. When you're up against opposing... Uh, opposing fire decks, he can just weld an explosive jet us here. We just have to pass. Not going to bat on, of course, because we don't want to put it on Jirachi. There was maybe some argument to putting a skateboard onto Jirachi to play around Let Loose. That's probably like the only argument I would have there. But looks like we're up against the Arcanine Turtles deck. See a heat factory from them, which is going to do us a huge favor. That's another real cute thing that there's so much fire in the format right now that you can take advantage of other people's heat factories like a lot, which is great. I put Poker Gears for a Greens, and Greens isn't Welder, which is very good news for us because uh, it means that we can probably initiate the prize trade here, which is excellent. They're going to grab themselves Flint Welder. Very similar to how we try and use like a Lily on turn one if we miss Welder. Uh, the Greens can guarantee them Flint Welder for turn two, so. That seems pretty good. They're going to flint away a choice band and a fire. Grab four to hand. Get an attachment somewhere. Just send it our way, I guess. But the heat factory is definitely beneficial here. We also get ultra space. So our baton is going to be useful. Ah, we actually get the nest ball. So I don't need to ultra space just yet. I think uh, just grabbing the blown here is good. We currently have... Just one energy in our discard pile, so I probably need to Stellar Wish here. Do I Ultra Space first, just to get a third Blown out and improve our Stellar Wish odds? We're trying to dig for a Fiery Flint. If I miss Fiery Flint, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, this is always going here if we attack or not. I'm just thinking if I really want the value of the, our opponent's Heat Factory for like next turn. Because it is very, very strong. I think I want the Heat Factory. We'll, we'll just Stellar Wish here. We get fortunate and find a Flint here, which is nice. Now the next question is, do I dump this Ultra Space or Fiery Flint? Or do I just dump Energy Retrieval? Hmm... Against a non-GX deck, we do need a lot of energy recovery to win the game. But I think one energy retrieval can go. We know that Victini's in our deck. This is where we'll count our fire energies as well. So there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So all of our fire energies are in the deck. So Blazer is only ever doing 10 damage. Which is good to know. But we're able to flint for uh, the full 4 here. Which means we can attach, board, retreat, and uh, just Fireball Circus for our first prize of the game here. And if Baton sticks, we have the next one lined up for us. Again, like when we suffer a knockout, we immediately get a free Stellar Wish as well. So we always have that buffer. And keeping the Heat Factory gives us an additional buffer to uh, keep drawing cards here. So after a sort of dodgy turn one, we're hopefully... Starting to get towards this loop here. Seeing the big old Arcanine Grand Flame does just enough to knock out the Blown. Of course, our opponent has that Welder from last turn that they greensed into. They have their own Baton, they have Ultra Ball. Getting rid of Greens and Ultra Ball, that's a pretty stacked hand by the looks of things. They have to get a Growlithe here. They're actually going to replace their Heat Factory for a Viridian. 
have a fire and just grand flame for 120. Our baton is working. And they're going to get two energies from the discard pile. So the Arcanine list is far less concerned about uh, their baton getting field lowered. They can retain energies very easily with their own grand flame. But So do I wish to pull a fire energy out of our deck before I do anything else here? I think I might fire crystal, then Viridian fire for fire. Just to thin the deck of one, then I'll ultra space thin the deck of another Blown, and then we'll get two stellar wishes, potentially. The thing about this deck is you really have to, like, not trust your own deck. That's, like, the way I think about this archetype. Until you've thinned your deck of all your fires, you really can't trust it. <laughs> you have to think of it as like a theme deck that has the potential to do about 3,000 damage. That's how you have to think about it. It's a really strange archetype to play, but it's also very fun. If Fiery Flint and a Lily. How far down can our hand go? One, two, three, four. I'll have four in hand. I can attach for turn if I really want to. We don't have a... Uh, um, a baton, which is our biggest fear here. I'm going to nest ball again. Don't trust the deck. Thin it as much as you can uh, is always my mentality here. Uh, I think I want the third blown over instruct. So we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to retreat. We're going to Stellar Wish and hope to find Adventure Bags, our ideal draw here. No, uh, no Batons. We did get a second chance of a Lily, though. So now we will switch. We will do this. I can attach quite happily to a Blown. We have enough, low, like, more than enough energies. We can Lily for three. This is what I'm saying. Like, you get those spots where you can Lily. And we can Fireball Circus here. Currently, no Welder in our hand for next turns. Our only fear here. Um, but we have a, at least one Stellar Wish to try and help us get there. We have a prize as well. Infinity won't be getting close. Do I need to do anything else here? I'm thinking about Fiery Flinting again. But I think it's too greedy. It's just uh, Crystal. And Fable Circus. There's possibly some argument for our attachment to be on the Victini there to be safer against uh, Missing Welder. Taking it from prizes is awesome. We know it was in there. That's good. Ah. <clears throat> They have a full six energies attached to them, so we could even, well, if we have the chance, we could even use a Rangaroo. At the moment, we don't have much else outside this one Welder, but it's a moment like this where you're like, Infinity is looking good, because there'll be six energies in the discard pile. We could Fiery Flint a seventh in there, and then we could just Infinity for a knockout. They're going to continue to Baton and Grand Flame here. So we certainly have plays. Certainly have plays. And we still have Stellar Wish at our side as well, of course. So we pick up a Fire Crystal, which makes me tempted to still go for the Blown here. I think it's all based on if we hit a Baton off this uh, Stellar Wish. Where I choose to Welder onto. Actually, I should Welder first, because there's an 8-card dig to try and find Baton. Yeah, let's Welder first. Still don't think I want to Fiery Flint. We might need this Rescue Stretcher. Okay, so let's weld up two here. We have a second Crystal in hand. There's nothing I can play out unless I want to Flint away board Jirachi. I could Flint away board Jirachi pretty happily here, I think. Again, don't trust your deck. Now our deck is very thin. 
We have three outs in a 15 card deck to Stellar Wish into Batons now. And there we go. We hit one, which is great. If we're being very pessimistic, I could still attach to a Prism Star, assuming now that we could play around Field Blower. Three greens are in the discard pile. Will they play Field Blower? Thing is, greens engines are quite likely to play Blower because they can just find it at the right time. So I think I'm attaching to Victini here. Just so we're safeguarded against uh, Field Blower. I'm going to push three energy back to the Growlithe. You pick up a flint. Another Arknight. Sorry, another Growlithe gets benched. They're going to poke a gear. Yeah, it does whiff. They've gone through a lot of things, to be honest. Three greens and a weld are gone so far. They can stretch it back to their Arknine, though. They can evolve up. We can Lily. So we're playing Lily, Green, and Welder. Fair enough. And Poke Gears. They've got it all. More than us. They're going to attach to their Turtonator and then just Grand Flame. Two more energies onto it, so that's ready to go for next turn. Oh, they're going to go onto Growlithe. That tells us that they have Energy Arc 9 in hand. So we can go onto our Blown. Have Stellar Wish available. Pick up another Lily. I'm going to start with Stellar Wish here. We can't thin any fires, any more fires from our deck, right? We have four and then nine there, so that's all 13. So the Fiery Flint is doing nothing outside of improving our Lilies. Um, field Blower doesn't do much, Rope doesn't do much. I'm tempted to take a Fiery Flint here, just to flint away Flint Lily, so I can Lily for cards. It's probably the best play. And we can Lily for three, looking for... Uh, I could also stretch her for one target here if I wanted to. Knowing that we also have the backup of Orangaroo. Our prizes are being mapped out by Blown. Stretcher for Blown and Victini. Yeah, I think it's right. We'll just do it for one target with the backup of a uh, of an Orangaroo. So we find Adventure Bag very late, late in the day. But we do have these. Fabul Circus. There's our Guzma. Our opponent's going to choose to go into their Turtonator. The Explosive Jet is an easy way for them to take a knockout. But it does end up removing a lot of energies from their board. back onto the Blown. And we have an interesting choice. Our opponent's gone through two Welders, one Fire Crystal. Do we try and make life difficult for them with a Guzma play? Force them to have another Welder? I'm just going to play this out quickly. 
<laughs> we have one more energy retrieval in the deck. I have to make a decision if I want to Victini this turn as well or not. If I Victini Guzma, it means they can't Guzma and attack us. So, like, we'd be ready to end the game with the Blown. So, I think Victini... It, it's Victini's time this turn. We'll weave it in while we can. Let's Stella Wish... Grab this. Do this. I've definitely just done something bad there. I definitely had to use the retrieval. Well, we're using the Blown then. Uh, well, he still can't Welder and Guzma to knock out the Victini, so we should be fine, right? Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> I've just made a small error. We're just doing things this way around, I guess. That's what we'll tell ourselves. This way we keep the deck thin. Genius. And it's Fable Circus. Apparently there's no energy in play, which means they can't Guzman the Victini. So they can weld or attack, but they can't do anything else. Yep, they just have to concede. Nice, nice. We got over the line against a non -GX, a fellow non-GX deck. We were able to weld on turn one, they weren't. <laughs> Which meant we take the we took the first prize. Which meant we just carried through the game. Which is good. I think we are favoured against the other sort of like welder stage one decks. Cause they need more than us a lot of the time. And they'll be playing all those energy cards, and like those cards that only interact with energy cards, but they, then they also have this extra amount of cards which are useless that are like stage ones that they can't play from their hand early on in the game as well. So they have like even more clunk than we do. And you saw our opening hands, they weren't, they weren't pretty. But hey. This game, we also get to go first, and we have Flint Welder, which is the dream combo. Those are the two cards you want to see. On turn one or two, hopefully one. Um, it means that we can essentially thin four fires straight out of the deck and then draw three immediately after, which is awesome. We also have a backup attacker that we can bat on onto if we have to, depending on what we're up against. I see a Tapu Lele and I'm instantly pleased because it's a GX Pokemon. GX Pokemon is our speciality. We have one fire in the prizes in case we ever need to Welder. Oh, sorry, Blazer. We've prized our Victini Prism. We have all of our Fire Crystals and both of our Retrievals, so we know that we'll have enough damage output. Our Stretcher's here. Our Guzma's in deck. One Baton is prized, as is our Adventure Bag. Oh no, one Baton's not prized, it's in our hand. Oh no, one Baton is prized, yeah. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So, I will Ultra Space before the Welder. And we'll Welder to the active. We get a nice Fire Crystal, which is always good to see. I will Manual for turn, because we've already got the Baton established. And we can just pass here. Pretty good start for us. We're already holding on to... Effectively 150 damage with the Fire Crystal and the Fire currently in our hand. Ultra Space, if it sticks, is really good for us. It can get us an extra Blown value. And we can at least Liddy for a few cards next turn. So it's looking pretty reasonable. We see a Reshizard. And as mentioned, we like uptrading on tag teams. It's our favorite pastime. Our opponent's going to escape both their Jirachi here. Get an energy on Zard. 
Are they just going to Kiawe? Are oh, they going to Guzma? And they're going to dead a change as well by the looks of things. So they're trying to slow us down. We fortunately already have a Guzma in our hand. Of course, one of the upsides of playing the Jirachi based build over the straight Blount build is if they're going to try and like trap you. Like all these Blounts have a two retreat cost, right? So if we were just playing the Greens build and they were trying to trap the Blount, um, they have no switch cards. So because we're Jirachi based, we play Rope and three switch. So we get around that pretty well. Also, of course, you can weld a retreat to stuff as well, if you have that option in your hand. We draw into a welder, speaking of the devil. We'll start off with Ultra Space here, of course. So, we have a couple options. I could uh, Fire Crystal Guzma, kill this, for our first prize. I could Welder Active, see what we draw, with the Pay Retreat option being there. Um, and what else are our options? Those are our options. I could Fire Crystal first and Welder. And just Blazer for one and knock out the Jirachi. That's probably our best move. Means we also get to draw three cards in the process. The only concern about this play is that uh, we are effectively losing a Welder. Well, we're not effective. We are losing a Welder. So it makes our Baton even more... It makes us a little bit more reliant on the baton, you know what I mean? We can nest pull out a Jirachi, which is always great. That's going to be good for us. It means we can pay retreat. We can fireball circus here. I don't think I want to play a skateboard, but they do oftentimes play. Um, they oftentimes play let loose. And I'm sure they want to let loose us. Certain of it. The only thing is, like, we're we're playing worse around Field Blower if I attach the board. But we're playing... I mean, we're already kind of playing around Let Loose with an Instruct in, in play. So I think I'm going to hold the board and just Fireball Circus. Reshi's Hards are so likely to play at least one Blower. But I think we have to do this. Our opponent's going to go straight into their Reshizard. Let's see if they have their own Welder here. Yep, we're going to see it straight out the gate. We see Ultra Ball as well. It's probably going to be the Let Loose. another reason like this is a great reason why we play monkey right it's these moments right here but us not playing the escape boards may be questionable there i feel like playing around field blower is relevant but we would have played around let loose even harder had we had played it it depends we still have a lot of switching outs like we have all of our switching outs in our deck so we draw back into board and we get heat factory as well to boot I think it's going to fiery flint here. Means they can attach and flare strike rather than have to GX us. Not that it's all that relevant. They could also start attaching to something like the Shining Lugia here as well. Yeah, see, field blower. That's why we didn't play it. That's why we didn't play it. They got pretty lucky off the let loose to find their field blower, but I mean that's why we held the skateboard. I feel justified now that we <laughs> that we did uh, play around it. Justice. Don't think we'll get the chance to instruct here. The hand's too good. We'll heat factory first, though, before Stellar Wish. Fiery Flint. There's seven already in our discard pile. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So getting back five with four in deck is enough, right? Because we need six to get through this guy. So we can Fiery Flint pre Stellar Wish here. Looking for that Welder off of this Stellar Wish. 
It's a huge blowout if we get this, obviously. Oh my goodness. Oh boy, we did it, didn't we? What's a let loose anyway? If we hit baton now, we're just the king. We're not the king. We're just pretty good. <laughs> so here comes all the energy recovery in the world. This is why we play so much of it for these moments. <clears throat> And we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. For a big blow up of damage. Now we are very far ahead in the prize race. Our opponent has to have let loose themselves into welder and three energy cards after already using two welders to get a response on us at all. They have Heat Factory at their side and Stellar Wish though. Bear that in mind. They're going to grab another Reshizard. Don't blame them. They can Fiery Flint. Getting rid of Kiawe. Gets them three Fire Energies. How many in the bin for them now? Five. Okay. They get to Stellar Wish. Let's see if they can find Welder. There it is. So now they need to... Are they going to go to the Reshizard or are they going to go to this? Yeah. Oh, sorry, they can't go with this, right? Because there's no energies on it. Argent Wing doesn't do enough. They have to attack with this. They go into the Reshizard. They even have the switch. It's a pretty big response from them. It's the explosive power of this arch both of these archetypes, really. Fire just has so much response differences now we've used three of our welders <laughs> I feel like we're gonna grab this rescue stretcher here and just grab it for one target Thin out our deck as much as we can before this big stellar wish now can I instruct pre stellar wish yes we can Draw two. Those are dead cards. Let's still a wish. This is a good one. We probably want access to energy cards. This can give us a heat factory draw. And welder becomes live at this point, obviously. Switch cards also become live. Digging deep into the deck at this point. There's Welder. But we have no Fire Energies. Let's just take the Crystal. We'll attach. I could do more like switch switch plays if I want to. I could start Blazer chipping him down for 10 as well. I feel like I want a double Stellar Wish next turn anyway, to try and dig for game. Like, this will probably get knocked out, and then we just still Stellar Wish, Stellar Wish, switch. Yeah, we'll just hold. We have the buffer of four individual prize cards to just do our thing here. They're pretty committed with this Reshizard. They start off with a Heat Factory, then they're going to Fire Crystal. They're going to Welder. They might even deck out before they win. <laughs> Weldering to their Shining Lugia. Oh, they're going to pay Retreat out. Sounds smart. They don't just want to lose. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, they're going to go into this guy. Maybe they still have Escape Boards. Only one played so far. They're going to Fiery Flint as well, just thinning their hand fully. 
from all the jank. Also scouting what they can stellar wish, I guess. Is that four physical switches? That's their third. There's the escape board, so they can take a knockout with Argent Wing. Lugia, the main uh, non-GX that people use, by the looks of things. So we have to be very careful of decking ourselves out, because we need to welder if we want to win this turn. So I'm not going to heat... I'm not going to Crystal Heat Factory. We've drawn into our second Fire Crystal, so... If we can grab the Welder, that would be magical. Rope does not win us the game, because there's non-GXs everywhere. Uh, the Blower kind of helps. The Flint is also okay for thinning these Lilies to actually make Lily live. Let's take this. Let's do this. Do this. We have no fire energies in the deck, so I can't get any value from the flint otherwise. Stellar Wish. There's our welder. So we're going to do this real quick. So how much energy do we actually have left? So both energy retrievals. These are our last two fire crystals. So our energies in our hmm, this is actually pretty pretty much a tightrope. Have to play very carefully with these last energies. Have to use every one of them. So I have to welder this turn and Guzman next turn for win. That's what I have to do. I can lose to Guzma plus field blower. They've already played three Guzmas and one Blower. Their deck is very thin. So I don't think we're losing. I think we just attach pass. I mean, I could Welder if I want to. But I'm not going to. It means we can play around. What do we play around by not Weldering here? Or am I just all in at this point? I think I'm pretty all in. The big upside. Yeah, we just have to. We just have to. We're just digging towards our Guzma now. So I can't miss it off Stellar Wishes. I mean, I don't think I can miss it anyway, but let's just do this. Let's just get rid of this to maybe make it harder for them to dig for uh, dig for win that way. So we have our Guzma in our last four cards, and we're holding on to 200 damage. So unless they Giovanni scheme away these two cards, we should win. Giovanni's Exile, that's the one. That's our loss condition. Outside of Guzma Blower. Okay, so we're able to get there. Life made it a little more awkward there because our Victini was on our last two prize cards, so we didn't quite have the same, like, foreverness that we otherwise have. Let's just scout here. There it is. Stella Wish and grab it. There we go. There's Guzma. There's Fire Crystal. And there's our last two prize cards. Nice, nice. Yeah, normally you're like, you feel pretty fine with resources if you have your Victini, but if it's not there, it's a little bit shaky. Let's get one more game though. Blown's doing the business right now. I like the deck. It's, it's like a challenge. It's a challenging deck, but there are big rewards to it, just because it's a non-GX that can swing. It feels like a gramble, right? Like, you have to play it well, but there's big payoffs, just because you're inherently doing a lot of damage with a non-GX. Super fun deck. And I just like Stella Wishing, man. It's good fun. <laughs> Stella Wish is just a good crack, isn't it, really? When you think about it. This is like new Zapdos for me. All right, let's get the last game in. See what we come up against. I 
would have been a pretty insane hand. It's got to go, though. Ah, it's our first Jirachi start. Feels good, man. We did it. We feel much more safe when this guy's in the active. We've again started with Flint Welder as well, so I'm pretty happy with myself. We're going second as well, so there's the chance that we can Fireball Circus for silly numbers. If we want to. We're up against Night March? Oh, sorry, Lost March? Lost March, huh? Well, we're scared. I mean, they don't often play Field Blower, right? I think we should be fine. I'm a little worried about Trombi getting rid of our welders. That's the main thing I'm worried about. I guess if we don't um, take the first prize, that's our main loss condition. So we're really under pressure to get the welder and the switch card this turn. Like, we have the welder, but we need to find the switch. Magna Blender. Also, of course, they can play Let Loose, like a lot of Let Loose. No Let Loose on turn one for us is great news. We hit Monkey, but I might have to bin it here. Bin it with the Flint. I think we've been Fire Crystal as well. Our da like, we don't need damage this game. Like, we do, but we don't need that much. I think we're going to Flint, Flint. Flint. All the energy out of our deck. We have two Batons. That's a small concern. Uh, we have... Three energy in the prize cards. Blaze is our last chance option if we have to. Blaze is our last chance option. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. We have three switch, two board, one bag. Our rope is prized. Our Guzman's here. Okay. Let's thin more energies out. I think we're going to weld a first for like an eight card dig for switches. There's a switch. We hit baton as well. So now our Stellar Wish is wanting to get a ball search. That's the dream here. No ball search is very worrying. Very worrying. How many do they have in here? Three, four, five with Hoppip evolving. Their hand size is low, though. Did they support her? They did not. Maybe they're just going to brick and lose. That's the hope. Let's grab a welder. <laughs> so that uh, if this Blown dies, we can still uh, weld into a new one if we still wish him to ball search. It's Fireball Circus. So they can Floral Path. That's only 100 damage. We can Nuzzly Gathering. Can they Blender? Will it blend? Oh, man. Oh, is it Grass Energy or a Supporter? Oh, it's not. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you can see the fragile, you can see how we are fragile earlier, right? You can see why I want a second ultra space, right? You can see all those things. The field blower hasn't come up yet, but I mean, we've used it. But it just hasn't been insane. Possibly the field blower is the shaky card. Like I, I had a whole thing talking about why it's really important in the deck, but at the same time, it's just like, we have those ugly starts, man, and we need to hit like our Pokemon early. It's not just finding one blown, it's like finding two for our baton to work. We've started Jirachi again, which is nice. We have Welder, but no target for it. So again, it's like Stellar Wish to try and find Ball Search. That's the hope. Need to find a lot, to be honest. We're doing more than Welder. But we're up against Luke Metal. And they're just going to Stevens Resolve on one textbook. So we can pretty easily knock this out. Even if they frying pan, it's six energy cards. We hit a heat factory, which I'm going to play. 
There's Bull Search, and then another Fire Energy card, which is excellent. We have our Victini, which is also fab. It's obviously very important. We have three Fire Crystals. Uh, how many retrievals? Two retrievals. One fiery flint is in. Oh, sorry, one fire crystal is in the prize cards. Okay, let's grab our baby Blown. Stella wish. I think I Stella wish pre welder. Because if I hit fire crystal, I can win, right? Sorry, if I hit fiery flint, I can win. If I fire crystal first and welder for two, does do I still win with? Fiery Flint. Yes. So I should actually do an 8 card dig here, right? Yeah. Let's do an 8 card dig for win. Burning a Fire Crystal feels kind of like yucky, but it's actually pretty okay. Because we have the Victini. Okay, okay. Uh, let's Stella Wish. Is there any other action I can do to lower my hand size for Instruct? Yes, I can actually. We can go here... Here, 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 here. Not going to play the switch because he, he might try and trap our monkey, which we don't want. Instruct, miss the fire crystal. Oh, sorry, fiery flint. Let's try it. No fiery flint. Okay, so we don't win instantly. Feels bad, man. <laughs> but we can pass it over here. Let's see what our opponent Stevens did into and all their wisdom. Frying pan's probably a good start. They're gonna nest ball and oddish. Now that is a warning sign, guys. We cannot beat Vileplume in this list. We're very good at dealing with the Hooper, Reggie, Melmetal, but when a Vileplume comes to town, we shake our Shake our little finger and say, we have no answer. And it looks like our opponent's able to go Oddish Oddish here, so... Even if I was to hit Stella Wish off... Sorry, if I was to hit Guzma off Stella Wish, that's still not going to be enough, because he can just Stevens now and grab himself Candy Plume, so... Looks like we take the L to this one. We don't play Stealthy Hood in our list. Um, that's a way around Vile Plume, uh, but we don't play it, so... I think we're just going to have to give him the benefit of the doubt here and say, good job, you hit Stevens on one, you hit double Oddish and Stevens on turn two. Like you were able to accumulate all that stuff. Fair play to you. Let's uh, make sure he has it, right? Let's still a wish. We still don't hit any fire, fiery flints, so it's a pretty poor turn for us. It's going to be get this out, I think. And try again. There's a fiery flint. There's four. It ain't enough just yet, so we'll uh, heat factory. So we're still shy of the mark by uh, one energy card. So we'll just pass. As soon as we see a Val Plume, though, I'm uh, scooping it up. Alrighty, we got to concede. We cannot beat the Vile Plume. They have only benched an Oddish. They've only benched four prizes outside of the Vile Plume. So, one downside of the Baby Blounds is that you do lose to Vile Plume instantly. Uh, we had the chance to win instantly on turn one, but uh, not able to happen, I'm afraid. So, that's going to be our analysis of Baby Blounds. Hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed playing the deck. I think it's a good bit of fun. Um, I think there's definitely work to be done, though. I think it is a little bit risky on those opening turns. If the opponent is able to have strong openings, uh, you can get punished pretty hard for it. And you've got to start fighting from behind, which is a little bit scary when you need to not only have, like, a three energy attacker, you also need to have, like, four more energies in your hand to attack with. So if you get, start going on the back foot, this deck feels real bad. And if you get let loose into just nothing, you will lose in, like, two turns. So we are quite reliant on those Stellar Wishes. Uh, the monkey definitely helps, uh, but... I think overall this is going to end up being somewhere around tier 2. If there's enough Rashizard, I think it stays up there. 
Um, but there are still Valplumes roaming around, of course. There are um, a few other awkward matchups like Weezing, which we didn't run into in the ladder today. So, And also uh, Quagnag's also very awkward for you because they'll trade one for one and they'll have a big Warelord swing, which can knock us, like, knock us out entirely. So... I think um, it's not quite perfect, but definitely a really cool archetype that I've enjoyed playing with uh, over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below and I'll be back for another video tomorrow. Cheers.